today's Gita, we wanted to talk about something. I was thinking, let's talk about something around Japa, the topic of Japa. So we opened and we were looking, you know, what does Krishna say about Japa? So we have an interesting verse for you today. So this one is 1715. This is from the chapter, The Three Levels of Spiritual Practice. Speech that is pleasant, beneficial, and truthful without being offensive, the repetition of japa and re recitation of the scriptures, these are called the austerities of speech. So when we read that, we were kind of, oh, wow, that's a little tough. <laughs> but it's also interesting. Like if you think about it for a moment, you th just think of your own life and think of maybe a difficult situation that you've been in. Maybe a difficult situation with somebody of a, you know, a little unpleasant nature, maybe a speech, a conversation you had that was not so pleasant, not so beneficial, that you went away from feeling, oh. Or maybe sometimes we ourselves have been the difficult ones causing the unpleasant situation, whatever it may be. You think of that for a moment, and here he's saying speech that is pleasant, that is beneficial, is an austerity. And, you know, I was thinking of this for my own self today, and I had a little example recently, which I learned. And it was basically, uh, like in the recent years, not long ago, there was a couple situations, so they were two different people, but they happened around the same time, of people who kind of just kind of entered into my life and spoke to me. We had a conversation that you can say wasn't so pleasant, wasn't so uplifting. And me, because I was also maybe not so strong at that time, I just didn't know what to do, didn't know how to deal with it. So I put it on a shelf, just gave it to master. But unfortunately, I also put it there with a label, on a box with a label, saying, you know, difficult situation, don't ruffle it up too much, don't ruffle it up and, you know, just leave it there, don't enter into that for too long, don't engage too much. Unfortunately, we put these sometimes. And, you know, after a couple years or so, pretty recently, we had a gathering. And there was a situation where one of the people who I had this chat with was there. And somehow, you know, you're more positive some days, you're more strong in yourself. I just walked up to the person and we had a pleasant interaction. We sat down, we chatted, we were having some food and uh, it was pleasant. And I was kind of thinking, hmm. After that, I was sitting on my own for a moment and just thinking, that wasn't so bad, you know, why had I made all these big labels and made such a big deal? It was one small situation that happened long ago, but in my mind it was unpleasant, oh no, you know, stay away and whatnot. You try to pre like protect yourself. And so I was just thinking to myself, it wasn't so bad, you know, and what's the point anyway of putting all these labels on people, on each other? Just let it go, and we do that with ourselves too, if we really think about it. We put labels on our own self, our own tendencies. So I was just sitting, thinking about this, and all of a sudden, a devotee was next to me. Very sweet, one of the sweetest devotees. Uh, you would never imagine them having any judgmental thought about anyone, just full of devotion. And they just turned to me all of a sudden and said, isn't it weird? Sometimes we just get the complete wrong picture about a situation, and I went, Yes! <laughs> and it was so interesting because for me it was just, you know, like a little confirmation from Master. Sometimes we get these little, you can say tests, or even better, let's call them opportunities, where there's a person or there's a situation in front of you that challenges you a little. It's like, okay, you, you've been meditating for so many years, now what are you going to do in this situation? Are you going to react? Or are you going to be able to be in your center? Are you going to be able to stay strong in your center? And I think this is one of those little things Master maybe gave as an opportunity. It's just, you know, sometimes we all have situations that are not so easy or pleasant in life. We all go through tests. That's the whole point why we're here. And it's just, again, in those moments when it becomes difficult, are we able to 
fall back on master and call on him and just allow him to take charge of even that situation. We don't have to do anything. All we have to do is try to stay positive, try to stay in our center. Now, how do we do this is a question. It's very easy to say. When the difficult times come, we can't go and open the Gita and, you know, what did Krishna say or what did Master say? Oh my God, let me ask somebody. We have to, in the moment, be able to deal with it. And remember what they all say, what the gurus say, practice when it's easy. Practice when you have the opportunity to become stronger. And we have the tools, we know all the tools that we need. But one of the tools is in this verse, Japa, the practice of Japa. God remembrance, remember the guru, remember the God. Chant the name, chant the name of the scripture, the, read the scriptures, chant. The more we can do that, even when it's easy, God, Christ, Guru, we just chanted that a few times. You make that our inner mantra. When a difficult situation comes in front of us, when, even when we are reacting, when our speech is not so positive towards somebody, when somebody is coming and saying to you something unpleasant, whatever it may be, even in that moment, imagine if we're able to fall back on that japa instead of, well, oh, I have to also dive in there and get busy. If our consciousness is low, if our energy is low, if we're not strong, we're going to react to it at the level that the situation's coming, isn't it? But if we're a little high, if our mind is busy in the divine, isn't busy in japa, that's where we'll respond from. And that will in turn bless even the person standing in front of us, the whole situation, all of us kind of progress together in this way. And just in the Gita, one of the things Swamiji says is, a sincere spiritual seeker learns to see everybody as an expression of God. And we can't do that from the mind. We can't do that from theory. We can only do that when we're in God. And the way to get to God, let's remember to keep this in our mind for the next few days, next week, Japa, as much as we can, with the most simple activities, bring him in, let him become part of you. This subject of speech made me think of something I read from Master long ago, and I found it again in preparation for this. And let's see if some of you can relate to this in some way or the other. He said, the mouth is the cannon, and the words that pass through it are the cannonballs. Many prized friendship has been destroyed by a few thoughtless words. Can anybody relate to some of these words? The words being like cannonballs. <laughs> Maybe we have not destroyed our friendships fully through them, but I think we have certainly um, attacked people through our words, consciously or unconsciously. You know, it reminds me of a funny story, a funny incident that happened to um, a friend of ours that is not from India. And you know, I can tell you a few things about being mis misunderstood because now more than half of my life I have spent outside my home country, meaning speaking a foreign language. So I can tell you all about being misunderstood or not being able to say what you want to say uh, properly. Um, but this friend of ours, he, we were living outside in uh, the ashram, and over there the villagers speak Marathi mostly, and some Hindi as well, I guess mostly Hindi also, but uh, this friend of ours wanted to uh, talk a little bit of Marathi, and he was asking this girl, basically he wanted to ask this girl, where is your father? We used to call him Baba. So he wanted to say in Marathi, Baba Kute, right? That's how you say, where is Baba? But instead he say, Baba Kuta He. Kuta, or whatever, how you say dog? <laughs> <laughs> Baba is a dog. <laughs> Your father. And the lady got very offended right away, obviously. <laughs> she was not able to understand that, in fact, he did not mean that. And that is because speech really is very incomplete. It's very incomplete. You can never fully express yourself through speech. Isn't it so? So many times it happens. And then you realize that speech really, words really, are more of a carrier to vibration. 
more than anything else. For example, some of the most coveted words out there are, I love you. A mother, whenever his child tells her, I love you, mom, the mother is like, oh, you know, my son or my daughter or my little one, and she feels so, so good in her heart. But, you know, if the baby did something, if the child did something wrong, something naughty, and he says, I love you, mama, that's a different kind of energy that comes through, isn't it? When a couple, you know, grows old in their relationship, that I love you may not come as sweetly as when they say it at the beginning, or actually it becomes even sweeter with much more feeling into it. Obviously, it will depend on the relationship. But those words, any word really, is a carrier for feeling and for our consciousness and our consciousness at the moment. So it is our duty, moment by moment, to keep our consciousness high, isn't it? But I don't want to speak too much today because, again, you know, I don't want to throw too many cannonballs out there. <laughs> but uh, it reminds me, I read in this book, these very wise words, um, so speak as if the entire world were but a single ear intent on hearing what you have to say, for so in truth it is. Our thoughts, our words, they're all registered in the ether. They are all going to attract, even if not literally people are going to listen to what we say, they are going to attract consequences to ourselves, they are going to project a certain energy that is bound to return to us. Of course, here um, Krishna is talking about speech. It's very interesting the things that he mentions. Let's revise them. He says, speech that is pleasant, beneficial, and truthful without being offensive. Most of the time when we open our mouth, it's not for any of these things. Most of the time it's just to say something random. Just out of restlessness we talk more than out of calmness, isn't it? I mean, I, I'm putting my, even if I don't speak too much in general, I put myself in this also many times. I say something, and then after that, I go and say, oh my God, why did I say that to that person? I better go and apologize because it came totally wrong, you know? And it just really hurts you. Open your mouth when it's necessary. Open your mouth when it's beneficial, when you have something useful to say, especially when we are in the spiritual path, especially when we are among guru bhais, among friends. It is very easy just to say anything. Because obviously we all know that we don't mean harm. So therefore we also perhaps subconsciously think we can say anything and nobody is going to take it wrongly. But it is not so. It is not so. So many times we hurt each other. But the interesting thing is he says here, here the repetition of Japa and recitation of the scriptures, these are called the austerities of speech. And I puzzle, austerities of speech. When we think of austerity, we think something, uh, I don't know, a challenge, you know? And I guess, in a way, it is a challenge. But we think usually austerity has a negative connotation, connotation to it. Because, obviously, uh, when we think of austerity, we think of tapasya. When we think of tapasya, we think of this. You know, somebody holding their arm all the way up for years or whatever it may be. Maybe that's the culture that some movies have brought us. I don't know. But uh, we tend to think of these things as being difficult, when in fact it should be the easiest thing for us to talk good about people, to see good, to, you know, have God in our minds all the time. But Swamiji, he told us of a very uh, simple definition of austerity. First, he said endurance, but even endurance is not so good. He said in good. In austerity is... Do what you have to do, what you must do, what is right to do, instead of doing what you want to do. Do what you have to do instead of what you want to do. And in this way, we can say that it is a duty of our mouths, a duty of our speech to be beneficial, to be of japa or talking about God, to be truthful but pleasant. We want to become more and more 
that person that, you know, when they open their mouths, even if you had to say something trivial, there is nothing wrong with seeing trivial things and, you know, having uh, some sort of conversation with other people. Obviously, we had to do that. But even then, see that your words are carrying that power that is healing, that is uplifting to people. That is the most important thing. That, you know, when you were in the presence of Swami Kriyananda or any saint, I'm sure, no matter what they say, what they are talking about, you feel just happy, you know? Swamiji tells often the story that Yogananda was telling them how to, they had to go and he was telling some other disciple, not Swamiji, how he, they had to go and do this job and fill this ditch and blah, blah, blah. Very mundane things. But because Swamiji was, didn't have to necessarily pay attention to what Master was saying because it was not directed to him, the work that he wanted him, the other disciple to do, he said like he closed his eyes and he just could feel so much joy even though Master was just talking about filling ditches or digging something or the other that we want more and more to have our speech carry that. And I like what Shamini said, Japa is one of those things that will ensure that your consciousness is high. That then if your consciousness is high, whatever you say is bound to come better. I'm not saying that it's always going to come right, but it's going to come better. And you know, we'll always be misunderstood by somebody, no matter how saintly we are, you know, because people also have their own problems and their own uh, things to work out. To work out. But uh, a good exercise would be for you to say, to see, to pay attention with what thoughts you are going to bed and with what thoughts are you getting up. What is the first thing you think about when you get up? Is it of Om Guru? Yes, Master, I'm ready. Is it like, oh my God, I had to make breakfast. Or, oh, I feel so tired, let me go back to bed. Or whatever it may be. Just introspect. See, at every moment, especially challenging moments, or those moments that we are closer to our subconscious mind, what is my first thought? because the subconscious will bring back to you whatever you feed it. So let us all throughout the day feed it with positivity and with the thought of God, Om Guru or whatever you want to make it. That that is your level of awareness. And then whenever you speak, uh, instead of being cannonballs, maybe there are birds singing through you or whatever you want to uh, visualize it at. Let us be, let's our words not only speak kindness, even when we have to be strong, that they have that feeling of God, of joy, that they come really from our center, because in the end, austerity is coming back to our center. Home.